We're good. You ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, how many of the guys for, went to Guys Night Out last night? Nine. Raise your hand. Nine. Wow. Good time? Yeah, it's great. Good food? Was there cars? No. Cars. No cars? No, they, got, they lost their, uh, their lease on it. And they're going to be building a Trader Joe's where they had it at, so they kicked them out. Oh. Well, I guess uh, coming around the corner then is Girls Night Out, which is... Uh, September the 16th on a Tuesday. How many ladies are going to be going to that? It's at Olive Garden in Coral Springs. Oh, good, good. Serena's birthday. Oh, yeah. Serena's going to be 23. Um, the next movie night we have scheduled is going to be September... The 12th or the 19th? 12th. It is the 12th? That's what you put in the mid and the okay. week below. Okay, I forgot. Okay. So it's the 12th. Right and um, God's not dead. I don't have a sign-up sheet for it, but how many plan on going to that movie? Raise your hands. What's the name of the movie? God's, God's not, not dead. dead. Oh. It's uh, about a professor who probably is atheist and a student whose belief in God and Jesus and... He's put to the quest of proving it, I think, is what the movie is about. I haven't seen it, but yeah. that's why I Well, okay. it is. You've seen it. It's really good. Oh. I, mean, I know we're so excited. Um, Friday, it's Friday. a Friday. It's a Friday. It'll be in here. Popcorn and free drinks, popcorn and free movies. It's a good time. It's a Friday, uh, September 12th. Write it down. Um, tonight, after class, we're going to Joe's Pizza and Pasta yeah. for dinner. So that'll be fun. And um, <coughs> does anybody want to hear about the football, the Miami Dolphins, and the Kansas City Chiefs? Yeah, anybody want to hear about that plan for the class? Well, then you're going to have to get Clifford Larry to talk about it, because I don't know that much. The only thing I think I've heard is Cliff, the last time he talked to me, is wanting to do, a, it's a Christian... Reach FM. They have 14 buses going to the game. It's $45 if we go with them. It's through Calvary Chapel. And... Our church hasn't confirmed that we could use the church bus yet, and we keep hearing rumors they might have a transmission problem with the church bus, so maybe that's why they're not committing. And so I'm starting to think of our backup plan to just go with another church, like Calvary Chapel, same kind of money. And uh, Joey went last year, thought it was great, had a great time, and I'm starting to it's, think... Uh, it's Faith Night. Yeah, yeah. Faith, yeah. faith Night. And then they'll have, the, uh, they'll have a Christian singer for a concert after. What night is after that? That's Sunday. Sunday, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 21st, I believe. And that's $45. And how do you get your ticket? And how do they know? Do you have a designated spot? You organize it so they can pick up here at the church? No, no. Yeah, we, you to go there. we would go over to Calvary Chapel. Uh, yeah. They have 14 of them going, and September 7th is their deadline, and they have room for us. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, we could maybe give a few more days if the church will commit to our church bus, but they've been not yeah, doing it. they've been it. having problems. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions that they would want to know about another announcement that I might not have mentioned, or I forgot, yes. or anything? Might want to know. Yeah, we got one right up here. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me turn the light on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm second. My good friend and brother in Christ, Terry Johnson's challenge for the ALS contribution. Oh. In return, I'm going to challenge my brother, Bill Pettit, in Columbus, Ohio, who's Buckeye Tough. I'm also going to challenge my brothers in Christ. Uh, Cliff Martin, and I'm also going to challenge Mark Cole. So, uh, 
this is the way it is, and that's the only way it is, and I'm not, I don't even want to entertain another possibility. That's wrong. Now, I, Grace Baptist, in fact, that song that we played tonight, uh, I sang, played the guitar, I was about 12 or 13 years old, and I went to little church back in the country and sang that song. I went to a flower show, and I strummed my guitar. Jesus keep me from all wrong. And we, you know, we'd have the country twang. Yeah. You know, we put a little country to it. But that's what we grew up with. But the point then is, it's good to challenge it. That's why it's very important to understand. So I did a little research. Came across this gentleman who's a doctor and matches right up with ours. And I want to listen to hear what he has to say about this subject. This, this, this series about false doctrine, I can't emphasize enough, in my opinion, that's the reason why I wanted to tackle it was to understand, know your scriptures well enough that when something is out of accord, it doesn't sound right, it's misleading, you, you, can, you can challenge it and you can say, listen, I, like, I need to know more about this. The one thing that he, this, uh, Dr. James was saying was, it's not about what I want to feel or what I want to hear, it's about God's word. And it cuts. And it, it will, the truth will set you free, right? And that's what we're seeking. We're seeking the truth. And we look at it through consistencies that he was talking about. So we can take uh, a verse of Scripture and we can tie it to another verse of Scripture, old and new. Wasn't that just like what I couldn't help it? But Pastor Corey, what he was saying, he said, let's look back to numbers. And how many hundreds of years later, thousands, Jesus was talking about the same thing. It all points to the cross. And that's the reason why it's good to challenge, to make sure we're understanding, and that we're digging into the Word, not just reading it, but we're studying it. Right? So, we're going to get into that uh, tonight as we continue this false doctrine, and we're going to talk about another thing that's, uh, that's out there. It's out there in the world, and that is, uh, let's look at a couple of false teachings. Looking at these false teachings, and their foundation, or lack thereof, will pave the way for a careful look at a false teaching that is floating around today. Is there any more papers? Uh, yes. This is one. Well, that's yours, so... No, no, I got an extra one. Okay. Sure, got extras over here, yeah. Oh, we got some extras over here, good. All right, so false what? Teaching. Teachers. 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 False teachers. Take a portion of scripture. 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 And twist it to say, if we live right, we will have no sickness or pain. If we have sickness or pain, it is because of sin in our lives. Anybody ever heard that? Yes. Yeah, you've heard it, Mark? You've heard it? You've yeah, heard it? but God uses sickness and pain to teach. You know? So it's kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's not a direct... Yeah. All right, well, I go right there, as I pointed out in the first uh, lesson of this series, these false teachings have some aspects that are true or close to the truth because what? They're based on some biblical truth. But then they twist. It's easy to, you know, like this gentleman was saying the same thing. It's easy to go down another path. And, and so many times we don't catch it. So we have to be very careful. All right, true or false? All sickness, pain, sorrow, etc. are a result of the spiritual lot fall of Adam and the resulting curse which had previously been stated by God. That's true. That's true. Who said that? Somebody over here said that. Very good, Bernie. That's true. Yeah, of course. She, she's let it, but Adam felt too. <laughs> I know, but Eve was the one. Yeah, well, but Adam, uh, Adam's the fall guy. <laughs> I guess. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
so, yeah, Eve, uh, well, he tempted, you know, tempted and, and led to there, but when Adam bought in, uh, yeah, he, uh, so he's, uh, that goes back to him. True or false? Ever since then. Yeah, this is fairly long, so you got to sort of bear with me. God does, at times, allow, like you were talking about, Karen, allow sickness as punishment for personal sin, and God does bring healing through prayer and repentance. Ultimately, God will do away with all pain, sorrow, sickness, and death. However, that is yet a future aspect of redemption and has nothing to do with our present day-by-day -day life except as a blessed hope. True. True. That's true. Thank goodness. Yes, sir. I don't think you can say that it's all for the future except as a blessed hope. You know, we, we can hope that it can cure us now, too. So I'm not sure that it's just a faraway hope. That the faraway hope is redemption. Today, we're in the battle. Right? But can you show up now instead of just hoping for the future? There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he does show up now. Okay. That's the signs. That, when, God, when God, and that's a good point. Let's go move off this because we talk about it later. It might be on the other side. When God heals, it's a miracle. And, and, and so we talk about that. And so to your point, absolutely. Let's read Revelation 21, 3, 4, and 5. Who would like to read that? We're going to do about four different verses tonight. I want everybody to jump around and, and uh, try to get to your scriptures on that. Does anybody need a Bible? Oh, this is Peggy's homework. What I did, uh, I'll just put these right here, Peggy. This was, uh, she did some Bible verses about being slain in the spirit. And I'll put this right here, because what I did for her is I, put, I did a whole bunch of four. So you can put it in your notepad if you'd like as well. That's laying right there. Um, everybody got a Bible? Does anybody need a Bible? Okay. All right, Revelation 21, 3, 4, and 5. Who would like to read that? of pain, death, and everything associated with this, with these, is part of the P, P of R. Promise of redemption. Very, very close. Plan. Plan of redemption. Which is also a promise. <laughs> so let's reread that. Even though the abolition of pain, death, and everything associated with these is part of the plan of redemption, we must remember it is still a future aspect of redemption and not a present fact that we can claim for our daily lives, meaning what it says in Revelation, that a day is coming. Isn't that exciting? No more pain. No more suffering. No more hurting. No more tears. Boy, wouldn't that be great if we had that today? But it isn't. It's coming, absolutely, it's coming. These false teachers that are, are, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. If God heals, thank you, or prevents sickness is a miracle. What it's talking about, I thought it was on the other side here, it was right here. But it's not, it's not a universal provision of God's redemptive program during the what? The age of grace, very good, who said that? Mark? Oh, okay. He's a Mark Jr. Mark Jr. there in front of you. Said that. Very good. The age of grace? 
Does anybody know what the age of grace is? The age of grace is when Christ. All right, let's let's. I'm trying to give you a hint here. Anybody got it? It was when Christ came to earth. He went to the cross. He was buried. He was resurrected, and he ascended into heaven. That's when the age of grace started, and it'll end when. When the rapture happens. When the rapture happens. So we're in the age of grace. So if you ever hear that saying, that's what that means. Never heard it put it like that. But. Yeah, we're in the age of grace. Right, Mark? Yeah, I think it's also important. What she just read, the part you're talking about, not to confuse it. That's not now, because if you go back and read from the first verse, this is after the new heaven and the new earth. Good point. It's not what's going on now. Right. Okay. So it's After not, the millennium, that be heaven earth? So it's not real complicated, but it can be when you're saying for the first time, I'm getting into this, I'm, boy, the, the water is cloudy here, it's a little muddy. But the more you understand, the more you get into it, and you're, and you're following God's word, not a teacher, when I say a teacher, a teacher teaching something other than God's word. Like it says, we don't want to, you want to teach it as God wrote it, as he intended. And so the point being is, is as uh, our, our class points out, there's things you want to make sure we connect the dots on. So we're in the age of grace, right? Okay. These false teachers, of course, have scripture to back up their false teachings. Now, by the way, I want to point something out. When I say, look, these false teachers, I'm, I don't want to say that they're the bad guys. I think for the most part, they don't know. They are teaching what they think is correct because they haven't taken the real time to study God's Word a lot of times. It's the hand-me-down. This is the way I thought it is, and so I'm going to teach what I was taught. So therefore, uh, not all of them, uh, like I, you know, when I said that way, I, so I, I just wanted to clarify this. Of course, I have to teach, then they'll have to, and this, in this area of false teaching, they often use as one of their passages is Isaiah 53, 5. So let's turn to Isaiah 53, 5. You're familiar with it. I know you're very familiar with it because it's one of the most prophesized uh, scriptures that when we talk about prophecy. So you're very familiar. I'll let you read it in just a second. Can't okay, get everybody a second to go over there. Isaiah 53, 5. Okay, go. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. All right, so there is more than one form of healing mentioned in the Bible. That's true. There is physical healing, there is spiritual healing. The context will give us directives as to which healing is referred to in this passage. We can look at the context of this phrase in the Isaiah passage. However, this phrase is referred to also in 1 Peter and it's much easier and quicker to look at in the context of which he would feed her rather than Isaiah, okay? So, I want to write all that out just so you have it. So let's look at and read 1 Peter 2.24. Let's flip over to 1 Peter 2.24. Do you have that, sweetie? Are you there? Okay, 1 Peter 
And we're reading, um, yeah, chapter 2, verse 24, nice and loud. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for the righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Okay, so there you go. By whose stripes you were healed. Now, where's the false teaching come in? The false teaching comes in if you switch the page and you go back over to here and it says if we live right, we will have no sickness or pain. If we have sickness or pain, it is because of sin in our lives. Well, if you study Isaiah 53 and you look at 1 Peter, talking about consistency now, right? You're looking at, is there any reference to sickness in this phrase, or even the greater context of the phrase, by whose stripes you were healed? Yes or no? Is there any reference to sickness in this phrase? No. No. There's no reference to it. As a matter of fact, it says that we are called to suffer after the same example of Christ, but nothing about being free from sickness. Well, I'd love to attend it. I'd love, wouldn't it be great to go to a church and I say, look, you accepted Christ, you said you're never going to be sick or have any pain anymore. Uh -huh. Here we go. More people, that's yeah. right, sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> that's right. I want some of that. You bet. Oh, by the way, Michael, if you do get sick, that's because you've got some sin in your life. Gee, all these people don't have any sin. They're feeling good. And here I am, I'm called out. That's that's not scripture. Yeah. Or sometimes some sometimes if you don't wait not to get sick, you just have more faith, you have more faith than you won't get sick. Right. There's another way. Of Another way of putting it. Yeah. It's very good. But also when you become saved and you're under attack by the enemy. Oh, yeah. uh, so, in the bold there, it says, we are freed from what? Sin. 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 That's what we're free from. Every year when we put on, we put on something really special. Uh, it's normally around March or April. Seder. The Seder. And that dates back when we talk about the Egypt, uh, the Hebrews being freed from what? Bondage. Bondage. Christ, the ultimate Sacrifice. sacrificial lamb, freed us from what? Sin. Sin. Because we're in bondage to sin. Jesus said, guess what came? Even though there is no way of accurately concluding from this passage in its context that the freedom from sickness is a present provision of redemption that does not stop the false teachers from using faulty and persuasive words to trap people into believing such an untruth. A characteristic of false teaching is that it appeals to the desires of the natural flesh and can easily bring our minds under the control of the fault of false teaching and ultimately under the control of a false teacher. False teachers take a how much portion? Small portion of scripture and twist it to say. Let's get that in there first. That small portion of scripture and twist it to say what we already said in the first one. If we live right, we'll have no sickness or pain. If we have sickness or pain, it's because of sin in our lives. And the second one is, if we repeat a short prayer, such an action will cause our borders to increase. So if I can repeat a short prayer a lot, that's going to that's gonna be a, a healing process. But the Bible doesn't support that. Matthew 6, 7 says, But when you pray, do not use vain re repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. 
it's easy to say, you know, say this prayer, say it 20 times a day, two times a day, whatever the prescription is, and it's going to help heal you. That's not biblical. And so if that, somebody would approach you with that, talk to you about it, you can say, well, gee, it is. Matthew 6, 7 says, but when you pray, and by the way, who's, t who's talking here? This Jesus. This is Jesus. This, I mean, all the authors were good. I mean, because God is the, 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 the spiritual author, right? I mean, they, but when Jesus himself, Jesus is who? He's God. And he's saying, but when you pray, do not just repeat yourself constantly. Well, simply repeating some biblical phrase in itself, your spiritual blessings. Yes or no? No. no? no. We are to be what of the word? Blessed. Doers. 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 Very good. We are to be doers of the word. Not hearers only. Not hearers only. We are to be doers of the word, not hearers only. And what that means is... When we take the word, it is as live today as when God spoke it and had his, his authors write it, his human authors write it. It is as live today. So we're supposed to take it and we've got to run with it. We're not just doers of it. We've got, we, 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 you know, the word, not hearers only. So we're not to be doers of the word, but hearers of the word. How many times have you heard a pastor will say, uh, and it's also in the scripture, what's the scripture? Give me ears to what? Hear. 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 To hear. Now, if you're talking, go ahead. David's sermon a couple weeks ago, was it listen, or listen, go, and run? Yeah. Is that what it was? <laughs> right, was that it? Listen, go, run. Last week was go and do. Right. To go and do. That's right, go and do. That was Corey's message, go and do. Now, Let's talk about what that means for just a second. If you're talking to an individual and you're talking spiritual stuff, right? You're having a, a spiritual conversation with them. And they're giving you that, boy, it looks like you got, uh, they're looking at you like you got an extra eye in the middle of your head because they're just not getting it. That should tell you real quickly they have no they don't have ears to hear that's what that means it doesn't mean they don't want to hear necessarily but they don't have the ears to hear yet why because they're not spiritual thinking they're not you know once you say god you know how many times a pastor david say you know you just say listen i i'm open uh, if you're real if you're alive i mean if you're if you're there i'm, I'm open I, I'm, I'm willing to give you you know an opportunity to speak to me and by the way, isn't that the way we're supposed to go when we study this Bible? When we study this precious, wonderful book? Lord, speak to me today. Because I got ears to hear. There was a time I didn't. The these, the thous, the, the, the you know, just did nothing made sense to me. That's because I wasn't spiritually receptive. Didn't mean I was a dummy. I would argue with that. <laughs> but seriously, that's all that means. So when you're talking to somebody, that'll help you know where they are so you don't get frustrated with them or short with them because you want them to understand. It just means where they are. So you just got to notch it back a little bit, right? And bring it back and say, you know, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Maybe they're not there yet. They start that relationship, they'll have ears to hear. Because it's a spiritual conversation. It's not a physical conversation. To receive God's blessing requires that we in what? What? Obedience. Obedience. Very good, class. In obedience to his word. Do what is required of God for the reception of the stated blessing. We just got to be obedient. God said, hey, this is what I want to do. 
we just went through what, how many weeks did we study that? We went, what, six, seven, eight weeks when we went through the Ten Commandments. And the underlining factor to every one of those, of those commandments was what? The obedience. I am your Lord, your God. Not a golden calf. Not any kind of an idol. And I'm a jealous God. I love you. If, if some woman was dancing with him, you didn't know. You'd be jealous. But we didn't have fun. We'd say, oh yeah, she can have him. You know. <laughs> but if it happened, trust me. And vice versa. We're jealous because we love that person. See, and here's the beauty of it is, God doesn't discriminate because he created all of us. Every one of us he breathed life into. He loves you. And he's jealous if anybody else tries to take you, mess with you, uh, uh, claim you, or if you give that kind of attention to anything else other than him. And that's why he says, look, anything you put in between me and you is what? What's it called? Pardon me? Idol. It's an idol. So, love her with all your heart. But... God's first. God's first. Right? Okay. But we're going we're to stay on this subject, by the way, for the next week or two at the most. Because we're going to get into, you know, uh, the false doctrine here on sickness and, and pain and things of this nature. And how it's so easy to go down a, a side road and not even know you're already on it, right? So what we can bring in her, where God can bring us back to the Word. So only to receive God's blessing requires that we, in obedience to His Word, do what is required of Him. God is Creator. God is love. God is majestic. God is sovereign. God gave His only Son for you. God gave you Scripture. It's His Word. I can't take this and try to finagle it my way. And a lot of, a lot of times it can happen. So it's our, our responsibility to understand the scriptures so we know. So we know. God gave you scripture. And the more you know about your scripture, the more you, the more you learn, you're going to know about God. It's a little bit, it, 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 and, 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 uh, it's when you start a relationship. I'm mean, using taking ourselves, and I know you don't mind. But there was a physical attraction. That's how all relationships start. Right? You, you look at one another and say, wow, there's, there's an attraction there. I hope he asks me out. <laughs> you know, and after about a month, but he didn't, I'm going to have to call him. The big dummy doesn't know. <laughs> First name. <laughs> so what happened? The more you felt a relationship, what did you want to do? You wanted to get to know each other more. So you had conversations. How do you feel about this? How do you like this? And I know there's an old saying out there. It's a popular saying, opposites attract. And I'll tell you, they may attract for a month, and that'll be about it. Because the more compatible you are, if you enjoy the same music, if you enjoy the same music, if you enjoy the same kind of movies, if you enjoy the same kind of uh, sports and activities, you know, like Martin and I, we have a ball, because just about every night, we're watching baseball. Where everybody else is watching movies or whatever they like. Yeah, football. We love to watch baseball. And go ahead, Karen. And I remember that said, or also, like in Tony Evans, if two are the same, one is unnecessary. So you can like the same things, but your personalities are totally different. Right, yeah. Right. There's so times that we, we compromise. have to clarify There's that. There's times that we compromise. <laughs> yes. Yes. You think that's what you do, Karen? You know, yeah, because if you love the partner so much, you know, hey, I don't really want to go shopping, and I, I don't, you know. So I, we go to the mall, and she wants to get her nails done, you know. And I'll say, okay, I'm going to go down. I'll, I'll meet you back here in 15 minutes. You know, or 20 minutes, whatever it might be. 15 minutes, he's got one. 
right two hours. Sure. No, but don't you do that? But I don't say, I'm not going to go to the mall with you. Sometimes I do. <laughs> if, it's one, if it's one o'clock on a Sunday afternoon in September or October. Uh, but seriously, you do these things, you compromise. But the most important part is you don't compromise on is when you had that personal relationship, and I'll guarantee it wasn't long with both for hey, how important is God to you? Right? Being equal to you. Because it hurts me, and I hear it all the time, I see it often, and I guarantee you have to. You'll take a guy and or a girl, and they'll say, I met this guy. He is really neat. He's, really, uh, he's not a Christian, though. He, he's, you know, he's not, and, and he doesn't even want to talk to me about Christ. But you know what? I'm going to hang in there. And I've seen guys do the same thing. That's not a one-way, that's not just one-way gender. Boy, I met this girl. Boy, is she, she's, she's hot. hot. She's hot. <laughs> she's just, boy, though, she wants nothing to do. Can't even bring up God with love Jesus. But, you know what, I think, you know, I think, you know, I mean, the you enemy and he loves that because the sooner, the more he can get you unequally yoked, he'll have you convinced. Mm -hmm. Like what Pastor Corey was saying tonight, hey, we can't save nobody. You know, all of a sudden you think you got the Superman cape on. Yeah. Here I come to save the day. <laughs> Boy, Judy is so Last she met me, because not only does she get me, she's going to get Jesus too. Mm -hmm. Two months later, six months later, a year later, heartache. Broken. Heartache. Because you poured into it. She or he is a one change that. That's what you have to deal with up front. If they're not a believer, let's talk about that. Because I don't compromise my faith. Why? I want the promise. I want those no more pain. I want those no more tears. I want those no more bad bodies. I'm looking for the, I'm into the redemption plan. And that's the program I'm on. Amen? God is amazing. Let's close it up with that. How great is our God? Great song by this song. And then we're going to go read uh, Next week's uh, uh, Teach Me, right? No, no, no. That's that's night. Night. no. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, never mind. But in two weeks, our next two, uh, Teach Me, we're making some changes that we're very excited about. And that is, just so you know, we'll remind everybody again, in two weeks, the night of Teach Me. We'll not meet here. We're going to go at 7.30 to Fellowship Hall, and we're going to eat before we have class. Oh, wow. We're, wow. we're reversing good. it. That's so good. we're going to have dinner from 7.30 to 8 o'clock, and then Bible study till midnight. There you go. <laughs> How great is our God? No, but we said that as soon as church is over, come over and start by 7.15, hopefully. That right. You know, now? No, as soon as church is over, to come back, come over to the fellowship hall because there'll be stuff ready to go at seven. Yeah, yeah, well, they got they still have the kids in there. Yeah, as soon as they're yeah. they're leaving, they are out. It, it always it's going to it's going to be a little flexible. Yeah. But most important, and teaching the night, and then the second week, the first two weeks, the next week, you know, we do Italian night. Yeah. Two bucks a head, right? Two bucks. Yeah. The same thing. We're going to meet at fellowship yeah. hall. We're going to meet there at 7.30. We're going to have dinner. And then start and about 8 o'clock. Well, like it's starting at 7. If you're here at 7 o'clock and you want to come over here and hang out, absolutely. And the birthday is going to be the first of the month. And yeah, so Teach and Eat Night is also going to be birthday celebration. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, okay? So then we, we have birthday celebrations the first Saturday of every month. And we'll do our cake and our ice cream along with a nice, nice meal. So and, and then the third, the third Saturday night we do nothing uh, or get in trouble. And then on the fourth Saturday night we'll go out and eat at uh, Joe's. So it's, it's going to be really exciting.
So uh, pass the word. We'll be obviously you'll be seeing it in the midweek alone as well. So we'll be putting that announcement out. But that's the way we're going to do it. The first two Saturday nights are going to be in Fellowship Hall. And then the other nice thing about that is we'll already have tables set up. Yeah. So you'll be able to sit down and eat. And then we'll be able to do that same thing while we're doing Bible study. You'll be able to take your notes much easier because we're going to be sitting at a table. So it'll be a, it'll, yeah, we're just going to stay right there. We're not going to come back here. No, we're going to stay right there and have Bible study. So that'll be fun. And another cool thing about it is instead of like Andres and Virginia sitting there and not knowing Fern sitting over here, you guys might sit at the same table and you get to know each other a little better instead of seeing that name tag across the room. And we'll have a table to watch, right? Yeah, so it'll be a lot of fun. So keep that in prayer. And we're just trying to, you know, we're going to, uh, we're subject to change, as you all know. We always like to mix it up a little mix bit, make things a little more fun. Eating early and, is better. And it's, I think it's going to be a lot better. And it'll be fun. Okay, let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for our pastors of this church and the message that you inspire them to teach. And Lord, it's such a blessing that you speak through them into the thousands of people that you're reaching in this community. And Father, we're just, we just ask that we can be your hands and we pray, Lord, that we can be your feet, that we are part of this discipleship, that we can walk out and, and, and in boldness brag about you, talk about you, invite others to come in here because it is an emergency. Amen. And then we need to get you more people to, 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 to Christ Almighty so they can be saved, so they'll have spiritual ears to hear. And Lord, teach us the scriptures like this. So we'll, if we do hear a false doctrine, that we can recognize it and we won't be misled and we won't go down astray, yeah. that we're going to be understanding your word and that we'll be able to teach it properly to others, Lord. And it's so critically important. So Lord, guide us through this lesson series. I just ask that you be with each and every one of us. We love you and we celebrate you. And it's in your precious name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.